In this very different time, Nathan Lane is doing something different. He's playing a detective on TV and talking with our Martha Teichner. Hi, Martha. How do we say hello uh, in the uh, era of... Like the awkwardness like was just beginning right, right. when we sat down last month with uh, Nathan Lane. Are we far enough away? I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. A Broadway star, for once happy not to be on Broadway, with all the theaters closed. I bet you're glad you've got a TV show right now. Sure. I mean, and that we, we finished it, that we did our entire season. It's a wicked world. The 10-part series, Penny Dreadful City of Angels, premieres April 26th on Showtime, part of Viacom CBS. It's a noir murder mystery, tinged with the supernatural. Vanna Hoff himself. Nathan Lane's character? He appears to be one thing, which is this sardonic, tough-talking, uh, classic sort of Raymond Chandler-esque character. And, and yet he's a tortured soul. Maybe it's Pachucos. A longtime police detective in 1938 Los Angeles. In this life, you're a cowboy or you're an Indian. What was happening in L.A. in 1938, there are these parallels, this, uh, the persecution of the Latino community, and uh, in the case of Los Angeles, the Nazi infiltration. Hitler thought Los Angeles would make a great base of operations, but Nazi infiltration was nationwide. He's my prisoner. Nathan Lane, at 64, is grateful for the chance to try something new. I'm feeling like, you know, at this point, the gods looked down on me and said, uh, you know what, let's let them have this. What do you want me to do, dress and drag and do the hula? <laughs> I don't think we'll be seeing any more of that. <laughs> Lane is, after all, best known for being funny. I've always thought of you as being like my sons. 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 I was going to say brothers. <laughs> it's like a house of pain. A comedy. Comedy. Wander through his career, you can't help but laugh. I was adorable once, young and full of hope. Now, look at me. I'm the short fat, insecure, middle-aged thing. He was poignant My and funny as a gay man oh, in the birdcage oh, with Robin right. Williams. Now there's an idiotic issue, gays in the military. I mean, those haircuts, those uniforms, who cares? It took Lane nearly three years after birdcage to come out publicly. I came up in a different generation. And that whole feeling of making a big statement about it, uh, I was never comfortable with. And selfishly, there was a part of me that thought, I'd finally gotten to this point where I'm playing the lead, one of the leads in a film, in a big movie, and if I say this, will that destroy all of that? Does it all go away? So I wish uh, I had been braver, but you can only do what you can do at the time. By then, Lane had met Devlin Elliott. They were married in 2015. Elliott is a theatrical producer. Yup, one of those guys Nathan Lane played so hilariously alongside Matthew Broderick in the 2001 Broadway mega hit, The Producers. Producer one, never put your own money in the show. And two, never put your own It was a hard act to follow because they just want you to keep doing the same thing. Lance used to say, what time do you want dinner? And I'd say, I don't know, I'm not hungry. Then at three o'clock in the morning, I'd wake her up and say, now. <laughs> and people expect you to be funny. Yes, yes. Every member of our band, living, dead, and undecided. <laughs> Lane was doing his comic thing in The Addams Family in 2010 when the New York Times published a flattering profile calling him the greatest stage entertainer of the decade. I read this piece and I was like, 
that's interesting, you know, that's uh, how he sees me. It was enough to make me say, is that all there is? I feel like I had a lot more to offer as an actor. So he pitched himself for the lead in Eugene O'Neill's tragedy, The Iceman Cometh. It's exactly those damn tomorrow dreams which keep you from making peace with yourself. Say it, I mean it. Say Roy Cohn, you are a homosexual. In a 2018 revival of the AIDS play, Angels in America. And I will proceed systematically to destroy your reputation and your practice and your career. Lane was lawyer to the powerful Roy Cohn, hated for his part in the 1950s Red Scare. Does someone who is known for being likable find it difficult to leap into a role playing somebody who is so reviled. No, I no, I love that. I love I love being unlikable. <laughs> you know, that that role, it's a gift. So too, how he sees his roles in plays by his friend and mentor, Terence McNally. Even a boyfriend if I had one, which I don't <laughs> who wrote about gay life and the AIDS plague. It was such a monumental part of my life. When McNally died of coronavirus last month, Lane asked if he could add his thoughts. It's awful that, you know, for someone, I I think someone else said, you know, for someone who survived another plague to have been brought down by this is just, uh, just horrific. And and, um, uh, it's really, um, but it's about remembering him at this moment and, and, uh, and his work. As for his own work, Nathan Lane's very first Broadway show was Present Laughter in 1982. Its star was George C. Scott, who years later offered him this wisdom. I hadn't seen him in a long time. And he said, uh, do you love it? Do you still love it? I said, what, love what? And he said, acting. I said, yes, I do. And he said, good, don't ever lose that. Do you still love it? I do, with all my heart.